Hi guys, my name is Barodante, and welcome back to the witness number two horror game character creation process. Nailed that. In one sentence, first try. And so as the title of this video says, this video will be mostly about adding new details to the outfit and texturing them a little bit. So adding the geometry will be mostly in a time lapse and um, then I just talk about a little bit how I do it. After which we update the whole character in substance and proceed there. So let's go four hours back and see what I actually had in mind before I started. <laughs> Now while the time rewinds, I want to tell you guys about this video sponsor Wingfox and their awesome cores that they found specifically for me in the light of my recent 3D videos. And it's about modeling this awesome revolver model, which is customizable, fully modeled in Blender and retopologized using primitives and everything. So it's a very clean, high quality work. It's textured in Substance Painter, so it's a fully polished model. And after that, that is also rendered as realistically as possible using Marmoset Toolbag. So you get full modeling, remashing, UV unwrapping, texturing, look development and like all the work and the materials and everything. So full process, amazing high quality hard surface model, which is like literally something I'll have to do sooner or later for my horror game. Obviously it will have a revolver in it and it's like way higher quality than what I can do. So I'm looking forward to uh, watching this course and recommending you guys to do the same thing. And the best part, this whole amazing course with beautiful skill from the very experienced 3D artist, it's only $49. Plus, especially for you guys, there's a code in the description to get you an extra discount, using which you will pay less than $42. So yeah, if you're interested, there's an affiliate link in the video description, and don't forget to use that code for an extra discount. Now, I think our time rewind is about to be complete, so here's me four hours before the beginning of this video. Today I wanted to do more crispier details on certain things, but before we start doing that, I want to go back to Blender here. These are the textures I imported or exported from Substance. Here they are, the set of exported textures. I had some experimenting with how to do it correctly and everything. This is, by the way, two different normal maps, OpenGL normal maps and DirectX normal maps. So this is for Blender and this is for Unreal Engine. So that's how it's going to be used. Pretty much it just has inverted green channel, but it can also be a one click of a button. So yeah, the texture is looking great. It's definitely like normals look a bit stronger in here than they were in Substance, I think. Like, these details are pretty crisp everywhere, you know, it's looking pretty good. Maybe generally, since Substance Painter has only this, like, environment-based lighting, it's always, like, it's gonna be pretty soft, no matter what you do. Also, what's really softening things is this um, skin translucent, skin scattering, right? Subsurface scattering. So I turn it off and yeah, like we can see they are actually that sharp. So it's not a mistake of exporting or anything. It's just that I really need to tone down the subsurface. It's too intense. Like I, I work incorrectly because of that, uh, thinking that it's gonna be a much softer result when in, in fact it's that sharp. It's not like, I, I'm not hating it for sure. For an old lady, it's looking pretty good. So yeah, this is my little testing of how the texture looks in Blender, and I think it's looking pretty good. In Cycles, I mean. In Cycles, everything looks good. And yeah, we can actually see some ears, so it was a good idea for me to work on them a little bit. Who knows how the actual final gaming version will cover the ears with the, with the hair, so... Yeah, it's definitely good that we have, like, decent texturing there. So before we continue texturing, I wanted to add meshes for fingernails. I just, I thought it was a good idea. And maybe like, you know what, let's add a necklace. Just quick shapes, they're in-game shapes, they will be just reasonably detailed spheres, you know. In here, reasonably detailed little planes. 
and a reasonably detailed curve for uh, some kind of lace that's holding up the dress in here. So these three details, I think is gonna really improve the thing. Maybe even a little something ornaments in here, so the shoes wouldn't look this basic, you know, something extra. And I'm pretty sure, like, the dress definitely has enough space for some extra geometry in its UV map. So, like, we'll put it here, whatever. So that's gonna be enough, you know. And I'm pretty sure it's quite relaxed on the shoes as well. Yeah, you can find some space, you know, for some detail. I'm mentioning that there's enough space as is because I obviously don't want to rebake into a different UV map or anything. I just want to add extra details and not move the existing islands because all the textures are painted on these specific coordinates. So yeah, little details are gonna be pretty easy to add. The only thing is the main like skin mesh. No, it's still, there's definitely some space for fingernails for sure. So no problem there. If anything, I'll at some point add like teeth and gums maybe? I was thinking like a few teeth would be a good idea as well. So I'll just quickly do a time lapse of adding all of that. So see you guys in like 30 seconds with everything done or whatever. Here we are. It's been three and a half hours. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you guys? I don't remember anything. So uh, most of the time I spent making sure or doing my best uh, to somewhat quickly fixing skinning of the new little bits of meshes. And yeah, they're like some of them are joined into the main mesh like of the skin in here. And I'm still uh, thinking through how exactly to do it. For instance, I kept the lace as a separate object here, but the nails are a part of the body. And same as the li little ornaments here that are totally destroyed by rigging here. Should smooth it out a bit, but I can do it at any point. But yeah, these are also parts of a mesh and the necklace is a part of the dress. Now I'm thinking either I should separate it and connect it to the lace of the dress in here, so two curve-based things would be together, or all of them would be just merged with the dress as just the outfit. I don't know yet, I'm not sure what's gonna be the best. Thing is, it's not about what is gonna be in the game right now, it's about what is gonna be in Substance. And Substance doesn't care about objects, it, it only cares about materials, so exactly that thing the material is where I have like all of them not disconnected so it will be kind of hard to paint on objects so I may apply a different material just for the lace and the necklace but I can combine them into one mesh. Yet still, in the end, the whole outfit will be one material and one mesh. Like all of this will be one object. Maybe even shoes, why not, actually. And the important thing for the future game 
like to how it all will be in the engine so they would all be laid out well on the UV map and right now I can see that I should for instance move the lace away from the top left corner so I'm gonna move it right here and see how things should be before we start texturing anything so yeah let's say it will be like this so now everyone has their place in the future one material that i'll be able to bake together do i really have to do it thing is things like laces and uh, necklace you're probably gonna be like painting them in the uv map anyway you know it, what's the point of brush painting a lace in here almost no point at all so yeah this is the kind of stuff i really should think through here like i'm pretty sure i could work decently well with things merged together but i feel like i, j I should just create a separate object which is just details of the dress it would be even more convenient to separate the necklace as well especially considering that right now the dress has this solidify modifier applied to it to make it thick and i assume it's automatically applied to the necklace as well which is not what we need at all oh my god that's an epic pose yeah especially like subdivisions and definitely solidify we just don't need that so right now everything should be fine this is the first time ever i like do manipulations with objects that are rigged to a skeleton and everything and like you join objects separate them like what kind of kung fu is this had no idea it's actually possible to do anyway <laughs> but yeah i i think nails having them in the object is totally fine because actually painting them together with the fingers is a good idea and if you really want to paint them separately you also have that option in the uvs so it's good here this is good and yeah, I spent quite a lot of time setting up the skinning for each finger so it would follow the proper finger and then also fixing the skinning on the fingers themselves because they were like in the middle of the bones kind of thing because it's automatic skinning here. You, you put the bones like this and the fingers are kind of like uh, this somewhere in the middle of those bones. And yeah, I, I definitely still have some issues right here, for instance, because like laces are pretty hard to move around. I think, yeah, in here as well a little bit. Uh, it's kind of better on this side, or maybe it's because of the pose. But yeah, so far things are going great. Now I kind of need to learn how to like update the mesh. Can you like do it? What the hell is this environment? <laughs> So yeah, I'll be adding the necklace and this lace as one object that would be like a new object that will be added to Substance Project. But shoes and the body need to be updated, while the dress actually stays just a dress now. Oh, that's looking funky. Oh my god, I was not seeing what I was doing. Okay, so um, I want to see how to update things. Not sure how much texturing I have left in me for today because it's been a while. But I should definitely start by exporting the meshes to FBX, I guess. I'll start by throwing just all of these objects into Substance and see what happens. Maybe it will just pick up the texture sets from the same names of materials or something. There it is, reimport mesh. Oh, wait, it just went ahead and used the same file, implying that I should replace my old file. That doesn't sound like a good idea. You should let me choose a different file just for saving iterations and stuff. Now reimport mesh. Ooh, there you go. I don't know why I'm surprised so much. Why is the dress white? Oh, those are so cute. But yeah, why did the dress lose things? Oh, it's not even cold dress. Ah, I probably messed up. Oh, right, it's about the material, because these are not the objects, not meshes. They are the texture sets. Let's try that again. I'm gonna export all the meshes again. And reimport re mesh. Okay, 
and the dress is live. Awesome. Everything's correct in here too. Also, why not export, like bake and export the textures for the eyeball? It, it's not hard because this is not perfect. Oh, by the way, before I forgot, I also made the eyeballs like positioned wider. I think it's looking way, way better now. It kind of makes the holes a bit more weird, you know, and creepy a little bit because there's this dark space around the nose. I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let's drop these in. All the textures go into just the fill layer, even the normal map, because that normal map wasn't like sculpted or anything like that. Also, it's really strong. Something like this is okay. Now, I just realized I don't have a mission, and for eyes, I can add that emission. Just like that. So now... This. Oh, wow, that's intense. Oh, this looks a lot more like it was in Blender when I used raw color space for emissive. So, emission also for some reason works better in raw mode. But yeah, now it's really identical to Blender. Oh, also, the normal was really strong. Probably... Oh yeah, that changed a lot. It became a lot more subtle. There you go, so 100% now looks correctly, which is good. <laughs> oh man, with these extra details, like the laces and the little necklace, fingernails as well, things are looking a lot more alive. I kind of worried that she looked super basic, like unfinished character. Oh, interesting, it's curved like that, even in the rest pose. I guess I kind of forgot to do something, I don't know. Man, the shoes look already just the way they should. <laughs> just throw some dirt on them and you're good. So yeah, as it should be, the necklace and the laces are now kind of like the same object or the same material. So I'll have to be going here and doing something to texturize them. Let's see, let, let's start with this basic material maybe and paint over the thing. Oh, wow. Oh, no, I'm kind of dirtying the, the dress, even though I'm using UVs. Something I praised in the previous episode, that I don't create, like, sharp seams on things. But it doesn't see the difference between, like, separate closed meshes, like, islands of meshes, even though it could be one mesh or whatever. But it's separate surfaces. It doesn't understand that. I wonder if there's just a way to disable this whole thing, or, like, select polygons, right? Oh, good, I can select them here. So, this is definitely gonna help. Okay, so... What am I doing right now, exactly? Like, everything I sort of selected became white? It became white because I drew the mask like that? Or what happened exactly? Polygon fill. Oh, so I'm actually... I'm not selecting. There's no such thing as selection of polygons in here. I painted. Cool. So yeah, now we have this white necklace. Now let's add another layer for the lace. There you go. Always looks kind of confusing because shadows are showing up in here as well. But... I assume, yeah, we have the yellow lace. Now let's make it a bit more matte. Good stuff. And yeah, I made sure that the UVs on the lace are super straight. Like I went manually and um, used that command to follow the active quad to straighten everything. All right, so roughness, definitely more. Kind of like that, looking good. And the necklace actually should be pretty shiny. It kind of is already, but it can be like really shiny. Why not do that? Treat the eye. Looks good. Oh, that's looking good. They do kind of have to look a bit trashy. Well, not trashy, but like they're from a farm, you know? So wearing like a royalty looking necklace would be kind of weird. And something like red, it kind of immediately looks like uh, someone who would work at a diner. Like, obviously, farmers probably don't wear a lot of stuff like that. Also, I should add wedding rings. 
as I think about it. Because they're... they're together. They're not random people. But yeah, I shouldn't forget to do that. Now, let's do the fingernails. Luckily, they're carefully tucked in right here, so it won't be hard to select as well. Bunch of layers on the skin already. By the way, I recently found out, I think you, like, can't merge. And that's it, you, you can't merge. You can duplicate a layer, but you can't merge it. So that's weird. Is that, like, technically necessary to not let me do that? Oh, that is so interesting. Look at that, this is so unusual. So, this is this holes layer, right? And it has details I applied before I even imported the nails. But right now, they're definitely influenced by these brush strokes I created before the nails existed. Which is like, how? I'm not dumb, right? It's kind of unusual, because you make a brush stroke, it would make it wherever the finger is. It's way over there, all the fingers. And this didn't exist, so it wouldn't know to put, you know, these details from my brush strokes over here. Yet right now, there they are. So they're like live. It remembers... I don't even know what it remembers. How the hell does it do it? Where does it store, like, these brush strokes? That's mind-bending a little bit to me, because what the hell? You either store it, like, in vertices, but that's definitely not the case here, or you store it as a texture in UVs. And this is like it's just, like, projecting from the top onto whatever I add, which is kind of maybe a little extra work to me right now, but really, I just put the nails on top and now I don't have that issue just like that, so that will be nails. But if I would actually do a lot of texturing work on certain part of the mesh, and then I would have to add another mesh as a part of the detail, and I would be thinking like, oh, I'll have to repaint everything on the new piece of mesh, apparently it totally just reapplies everything on top of the new geometry somehow. I'm not crazy, right? This is really unusual. Anyway, why are they so, like, dark, even though the color is that light? Like, this is white. That's not normal. Something with the blending, maybe? Can't imagine it to be the case. Maybe I just need to, like, rebake the things, actually, for all the, all the texture sets. The ones that I talked about before, because this is the new geometry. I hope it won't mess things up. Like, all this good stuff, and I guess that as well, opacity we don't need. Now let's do just skin, and that's how it's actually looking in action. Whoa. There you go, nails are all white. <laughs> that was fun. Now let's do the same thing for the dress, probably the colors are also weird somehow. Also, the dress is always weird in my case because of the thin walls of the dress. It's like double-sided and there is like all super dark right now. I have to like remove ambient occlusion from it because it just doesn't work. I don't know if maybe there's a way to set up like better ray casting that it would actually work with the thin cloth in here, but I don't know. I haven't like I tried quite a few times. It didn't seem to work. Oh, so the shoes don't actually look the way they do, <laughs> the way they did just now. They were darker also for that weird reason, and now they're like one color. I thought it was like a good coincidence that the color is nicely darker a little bit, like almost the way I would choose it to be. Well then, let's do the different color for the shoes decor right here. Alright, so it's, it's all, all this. Oh, what is that? Mesh fill. That's not mesh fill, that's an island fill. That's because I'm in UVs, right? So if I do it here... That is so cool! So there is a way to more or less, you know, talk to actual bits of geometry here. And they don't even have to be like separate objects, I assume. What I'm trying to say is, if we go to the dress, 
like the lace on the dress it was all one object but i know that inside of it there are several separate islands so the main lace over the waist two separate hoops right here and this thing is one as well so if i go ahead and i know here's the the layer black mask and yep is just grabbing separate islands of uh, polygons that's very cool so i can select separate triangles separate quads separate bits of meshes and uv chunks that's what i wanted i guess if you use uv chunks even the in 3d viewport you will be only filling uv chunks chunks okay last thing i don't want actual white fingernails that's weird i mean weird is good here but nah let's kind of start with this i was also wondering like so i have this mask on the fill layer that's only like using like the mask is only working with the nails now and i can add a thing like for instance paint to this layer question is will i be inside of the mask or will i be defining it i completely forgot the shortcuts there we go so if i'm painting like with uh what oh i'm painting the mask so this was added to the mask and it's looking brighter here because the nails are thin walls and they're having the same dark ambient occlusion issue as the dress so they're still too dark they should be even brighter that's what they supposed to look like but i can't sacrifice ambient occlusion on the whole body it looks too good <laughs> yeah maybe i'll be disabling it or something you can do that in the render settings i think i forgot to set up the color here too yeah i was thinking this is looking trashy i think i'm gonna keep this uh, not as shiny trashy i don't mean like she is white trash i mean you know the countryside kind of fashion something really old a lot of the times or something like that uh, i i just have some kind of memory that this kind of combinations were a thing back in the day so also like you don't know how long ago they died you know so all of this should look kind of old and yeah maybe a little bit of the shine like this it is leather initially even though it's like old and all scruffy now i guess oh man i'm so happy with this addition she now looks like a legit character so this look plus the hair that's gonna be awesome so yeah i, I think it's gonna be it for today because literally right now i usually go to bed <laughs> so that's what i'm gonna do uh, one last thing i want to show you guys is that i actually reduced the amount of hairs on the head it was very laggy and like huge amount of hairs before and i realized like i keep struggling with the fact that everything lags when i show the hairs and like what for it looked kind of weird so this is way better like it fits way more you know she's kind of corpsey plus old you know women sometimes lose hair as well like not in a male pattern but sometimes in male pattern as well i know a lot about being bold but yeah i think this is like totally awesome also the hair is not black for some reason evie always shows it black Th that's why i forgot to mention that but yeah this is kind of the look I don't know how much of this will be actually translated to Unreal Engine, but it definitely can pull it off. It's just about like whether I'll be able to use it in terms of performance, because it looks awesome and everything, but can you play that? Oh man, she's so cool. And that black necklace is weird. Anyway, that'll be it for today. Really happy with the fact that we now have fingernails. I'll probably go ahead and add some kind of fingernails as well. Oh my god. To the grandpa generally i feel like i will be upgrading grandpa a little bit after i finish working on the grandma so things would be consistent in one way or another i think texturing is generally going pretty fun here oh yeah with fingernails everything is much more awesome generally the model feels a lot more complete this way and man her face is just sometimes you just catch that little shine like in here is easier kinda 
And like just seeing that is like, whoa, <laughs> kind of cool. So yeah, this is it. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Man, it's really exciting seeing that the model actually looks cool in Eevee because that's a lot closer to the way Unreal Engine works in general. So yeah, this is pretty awesome that we're getting quite a look here.